It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Thursday, the 28th of December. I'm Michael Groff. Quiet weather continues here across the southwest. Temperatures getting a little bit above seasonal averages today through the weekend. Now, we might see just a small chance of showers on Saturday or Saturday night and maybe somewhat more unsettled weather as we go into next week. But there is still a ton of forecast uncertainty, which, of course, we're going to dive into and talk all about it as we do here on these videos every day. So let's do it here. Almanac from yesterday, 67 degrees, the afternoon high, 43, the morning low, averages at 65 and 44. Outside now, it's 7.20 a.m. We've got a few clouds around right now, 45 degrees at Sky Harbor, 2.35, humidity 70%. It's a light wind. The barometer is rising. The upper-level weather pattern across the nation features a big area of low pressure still over the middle of the country, trudging east as it does, some rain over the southeast U.S., Around here, a shortwave ridge is building on in. And so with that, yeah, there's some high-level moisture, but temperatures are going to warm up a little bit to slightly above average levels, and the main storm track is going to stay away from us at least for the next couple of days. The watch warning map is pretty quiet across the country. A few dense fog advisories, parts of Nebraska, some of the adjacent states, as well as up around uh, Cleveland over the uh, central and eastern Great Lakes. Of course, here in Arizona, it's rather quiet. Speaking of, convective outlook, very quiet with most of the nation in cool, stable air, no organized severe weather, hardly even any thunder, just a little bit there for the southern tip of Florida. All right, let's get to the precipitation outlook. This is valid through Thursday morning of next week. Rain amounts in Phoenix, maybe a few hundredths of an inch. The WPC is highlighting this for right at the end of this period here, late uh, Wednesday and into early Thursday, but there could be a shower or two even before that. And we're going to talk about what's going on with this weather pattern as best we can. As we dive on into the models, take a look at things. This is the GFS. It is the 06Z run. This is valid at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Okay, we've got that low over the uh, middle of the country, moving into the eastern half of the nation. We've got our sh shortwave ridge here over the southwest. And conditions fairly dry. What it means for us down at the surface today, mostly sunny to partly cloudy at times. High temperatures this afternoon, I'd say mid to upper 60s, just slightly above normal, just a, a gorgeous day, another Chamber of Commerce day, another day where you know why there's five and a half million people that live here. It's not for our weather in July, it's for the fact that we're not sitting here shoveling snow or uh, suffering through bitterly cold temperatures. And about as cool as it's going to get here is tonight, where we'll have mostly clear to partly cloudy sky overnight lows, generally upper 30s to mid 40s, and then tomorrow. Partly sunny, warmer, highs, upper 60s and low 70s. Again, gorgeous. Saturday, we've got a negative tilt little shore wave that's coming our way, but there's not a lot of moisture associated with it, just a, a modest amount. So the day on Saturday looks partly cloudy with high temperatures topping out in the upper 60s and low 70s. But by Saturday night, with that system coming through, there might be a light shower. But any rain that occurs would be very widely scattered. It would be light in nature. It may not amount to anything, and most of you probably don't get any rain. Nevertheless, we'll mention that 20% chance of rain for Saturday night. So if you're out and about, do keep that in mind. Early Sunday morning still possible. Then that system passes by, so the day on Sunday looks mostly sunny. A bit cooler, though. Highs upper 50s to middle 60s. Now, for your New Year's Eve festivities, the day New Year's Eve, again, quiet for the evening hours. Maybe some clouds, but by midnight, when you're ringing in 2024, looks pretty nice. Temperatures around 50 degrees. Lows for New Year's Day, Monday morning, should be down in the 40s for most of us. High temperatures topping out in the low to middle 60s. And again, the day on Monday looks fairly dry. We will see an increase in clouds, though. But by Monday night, with this trough coming on through... There may be a shower or two, again, similar to the system on Saturday, except this system isn't negative tilt. It's just uh, more of a positively tilted or neutrally tilted trough. More of a, uh, It's an open wave type system, but it's not really going to have a lot of moisture associated with it. So just widely scattered showers possible. And then Tuesday, that system is on by. Temperatures around 60 degrees for the afternoon high. And Wednesday. The models start to differ here. The GFS is showing it. Fairly dry here. Um, but the European and many of its ensemble members show another system coming on in here by late Wednesday, Wednesday night, and that could bring another chance of showers, albeit a fairly small chance for some light rain. 
Uh, but the GFS says no. And we'll show you the differences here in just a moment as we go out further. This is a week from today, Thursday the 4th. GFS shows a trough to the east. A shortwave ridge trying to build in here. And if that's right, conditions would be dry, temperatures around, or just maybe even slightly above average. Going out 10 days, this is Saturday the 6th. GFS shows a trough over the Pacific Northwest, but we are dry. All right, that's one idea. Let me show you the European, though. This is out to next Thursday, the 4th. It's got a trough coming into the southwest, positively tilted system. If that's right, we could see some showers in here. And then as we go out to Saturday the 6th, the European has another positively tilted trough coming on in for another chance of at least some scattered showers. Again, this would be mostly light. This is not going to be a, a big drought buster type rain. None of these systems are, but it does show these frequent systems, a very progressive pattern that would bring chances of rain every couple of days throughout uh, most of the forecast period from Saturday onward, if the European is correct. Uh, we'll have to see which model ultimately plays out. There's definitely a split camp here. Now, as we look at uh, precipitation for Phoenix, and again, this is going to go out through uh, January the 11th, and we've got to, this is off the GFS ensemble. The mean is only about a quarter of an inch, and you've got a f quite a few members here in this ensemble that show no rain at all. You got a few others that are way up there, three quarters of an inch or an inch. The European ensemble is more consistent. Only one member shows no rain at all over the next couple of weeks. But you've got another member there the, on the upper end that shows two inches of rain, and you've got everything in between. The ensemble mean, mean is where you want to look at here, is around three quarters or just above three quarters of an inch. So right now, probably the forecast is going to lean ever so slightly toward the European and its ensemble members for an idea of a, of a somewhat broadly unsettled pattern. We probably don't see a significant amount of rain, but we're going to watch how this plays out. It is an El Nino year. We'd love to see more El Nino type weather that is typical for the, sea, for the uh, weather pattern, but who knows? A lot of other factors to consider there. All right, temperatures off of the national blend of models. A little bit above average through the weekend. The next week, temps closer to normal. Highs in the 60s, lows mostly 40s, around 50 degrees. On a couple of mornings, particularly tomorrow morning, lows in the cooler pockets could get down in the 30s. And that is going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video is due back here tomorrow morning. And should you happen to enjoy these videos, then be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell. Leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. If you really like what we do here and you want to support us monetarily, well, then you know what to do. Click that little thanks icon below the video here on YouTube and make your monetary contributions, $2, $5, $5,000. All of it helps in the furtherance of this channel and making some desperately needed upgrades here to Studio B, uh, which right now include probably a, a new computer. It's... This old thing is uh, holding together, but uh, we're, we're doing the red-green approach. We got duct tape. We got silly string. Uh, we got paper mache. We got paper clips, and we got a lot of love. And that's, that's, that's how we put out these videos right now. All right. The executive producer of the Phoenix Arizona Weather Discussion is my one and only, the sweetest of all time, the Asian sensation, and the proprietor of SweetChildAZ.com.org and the Facebook page of the same name, Sweet Child Arizona. Talking about my Michelle, so check her out. And also, in the description, I'm leaving uh, her, her video chronicling her trip to the Philippines, part one. Part two will be up very soon. I promise you that uh, next day or two. So be looking for it. All right. And thank you guys so much for watching, all of your continued support. We could not do these videos without you, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Please be safe out there, and you guys have yourselves a beautiful Thursday.